Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an extremely powerful ARM-based single board computer. And, you know, when it comes down to it, this chip is going to change the SPC game. Recently on the channel, we took a look at a mini ITX PC powered by this same chip. But we now have single board computers about the size of the Raspberry Pi. Actually, a bit thinner than the Raspberry Pi. And we will be seeing a lot of these boards hitting the market in 2022. Prices are going to range from $99 up to $200, depending on the storage and RAM configuration. But what I have here is the all-new Firefly RK3588 SPC. As the name implies, it's powered by the RK3588S, and this is kind of a new variant from the RK3588. We really haven't seen much of that, but they've removed a few features like PCIe 3.0 to keep the cost down, but we're still going to get the great performance that this chip can put out, and through all of my tests so far, this is on par with the Snapdragon 855 Plus, and actually some devices with the Snapdragon 865. So needless to say, this is a huge jump in performance when it comes to these ARM-based single board computers. And real quick, here's a size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and this new board. As you can see, they're around the same size, but we don't have as much I.O. sticking out on this new one here. But like I mentioned, a lot of these boards will be hitting the market in 2022 with tons of different I.O. options. But when it comes to the I.O. on this board, we've got a full-size HDMI port, a recessed gigabit Ethernet port, 3.5mm audio jack. Moving over to the other side. USB Type-C, which is used for OTG or ADB, a full-size USB 3.1 port, and a full-size USB 2.0 port. We've also got a micro SD card slot, but this also comes pre-installed with eMMC storage, up to 64 gigabytes. And we've got an M.2 slot up here. I've tested a 256 gigabyte drive, and it does work out really well with Android and Ubuntu. And like I mentioned, this is powered by the all-new Rockchip 3588S. In the past, Rockchip has been a little lackluster, even with the 3399, something that I'm just not a huge fan of. It didn't have enough power, created way too much heat. And to tell you the truth, when they announced this new chip, I was very skeptical. But I've had a chance to test this out, and Rockchip has really stepped up their game. When it comes to the new 3588 versus their old 3399, they're claiming up to 4 times CPU performance and 8 times GPU performance. In some cases, this seems to be a lot more. But what we have here is a new 8 core, 8 nanometer ARM CPU. We've got 4 Cortex A76 cores running at 2.4 gigahertz and 4 Cortex A55 cores running at 1.8. The GPU is a Mali G610 MP4. This board here happens to have 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, but this will support up to 32. I've got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage on board. Plus, we have the option to add an M.2 NVMe SSD, and we have micro SD card support. It's got a new neural processing unit with up to 6 tops of performance, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and this supports Linux and Android 12 right out of the box. In this video, we're going to be testing out Android 12. I kind of want to get this out of the way because there's a lot that I want to do with Linux. And in a previous video I did with the same chip and a much more expensive unit, we tested out Linux and performance was outstanding with their build of Ubuntu using the GNOME desktop, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So I'm going to wait about a week to get that Linux video out on this, but we should see some really good performance. Right, so the build of Android 12 that they have right now for this board has actually been pretty stable. Unfortunately, we don't have Google Play, and there are a few apps that I just can't test without Google Play services. I was able to get MicroG installed, so some games that, you know, are free on Google Play, I can log in and play with those. But anything that requires the Google Play purchase DRM, I just can't launch, like Minecraft. But I was able to get a bunch of awesome games up and running on this board the way it sits right now. We'll take a look at those in a second. I've installed the third-party app store known as Aptoid. There's a few others out there. You can install what you want, but I've had really good luck with it. I personally don't sign in with Aptoid. It's just something I can download games and apps right there to the device, no problem at all. The first thing we're going to take a look at are some benchmarks, and then we'll move over to some native Android games, and then finally we'll wrap it up with some emulation here. From the left to the right, first up we've got Geekbench 5. Single core, 517, multi, 2312. Not super impressive just looking at this if you were to compare it to a newer Android phone, but it's really good for a single board computer. In the middle, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that GPU. Total score, 4,579. And if we take a look at the bottom of that benchmark, it says we beat 72% of all of the devices that have run this. So we're definitely getting some really good performance with that new Mali GPU. 
And the final one here was Antutu. We got a total score of 639,132. And this is the original version of Antutu. It's not the light version. Most definitely the highest score that I've seen out of an ARM-based single board computer while running this benchmark. And it's coming in line with the Snapdragon 855 Plus and even some devices that really can't keep the CPU cool enough with an 865. So far, overall UI performance and these benchmarks are looking incredible. Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. So the first native Android game we're going to test here is Asphalt 9, and this runs really, really well. Every once in a while when there's lots of particles on screen, I do notice a dip. I wish I had an FPS counter on screen, but this is definitely running at full speed. And by the way, my screen resolution or my game capture resolution is set to 1080 right now. This game won't upscale to 4K, but it still looks good on a 4K display. Next up, Call of Duty Mobile. I'm at medium settings and I have the frame rate set to extreme. I think it's only running at 60. I don't think we can get 90 hertz out of this board just yet, but it runs really good. I've got an Xbox controller connected. This does support PS3, PS4, and real Xbox controllers. Next up, we've got Grid Autosport. Now, a lot of people haven't heard about this, but this has been out on the market for about two years, I believe. This is the official port of Grid Autosport over to Android, and in my opinion, it's definitely one of the best-looking racing games on Android right now. From the presets, I'm at quality, and we're running at 30 FPS. I just can't get it to run at 60. There's no toggle, at least on this device here, but 30 still looks really good. And the final native Android game I wanted to test here was Genshin Impact. If you know anything about this on Android, we don't have official controller support, but it's just a lot easier to play with a controller, so I use something called Mantis Buddy. You install it, you start it up over ADB, and you can basically map your controller to touch points on the screen. We're at medium settings, 60 FPS, and at medium, I still notice some dips here and there, so I'd say a medium-low mix would be the way to go. But this is a harder one to run, and seeing it running on a single board computer is pretty amazing. Now it's time to move over to some emulation testing, and first up we've got Dreamcast. I'm using the ReDream emulator. Unfortunately, since I don't have Google Play services, I can't get this upscaled. But I'm pretty sure that this little thing would handle 4K Dreamcast using ReDream. PSP emulation presents no issue whatsoever for this chipset. Here we have the standalone version of PPSSPP at 5x, and even the harder to run stuff, you can go to 3, 4x with Chains of Olympus and even Midnight Club Dub Edition. So when it comes down to it, lower end emulation is going to work great on the RK3588. So let's go ahead and take it up to GameCube. Here we have the Dolphin emulator. We're at the native resolution using the Vulcan backend. We've got Blue Storm running at full speed. I know it's a bit hard to see that FPS up in the top right hand corner, but it is definitely running at full speed. And keep in mind, I'm using the official development build of the Dolphin emulator from their official website. And it even handles one of the harder ones to emulate, kind of my go-to test, Automotolista. Now we're at 60, but around the track, you will see it dip down into the mid 50s every once in a while. But when it comes to a single board computer, this is some amazing performance. Now let's see how it handles PS2 using Ether SX2. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, 3x resolution, Vulcan back end. I'm at the safe preset. I didn't have to turn it to unsafe to run this game at full speed, but it's not a super hard game to emulate. But we are upscaled with this, and it's running at 60 FPS. Next up, we've got Jack and Daxter, Lost Frontier, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if this ran at 30 FPS, but we're in safe mode right now with the Ether SX2 emulator at 3x, and it seems to be performing really well. I'm not sure if there's a 60 FPS hack for this game or not. I'm not sure if it would run it at 3x, but 1x, 60 should be good to go with this one. But it doesn't mean that every single game is going to be fully playable on this board, at least at the time of making this video. Here's God of War, safe mode, 1x resolution, I tried OpenGL and the Vulcan backend. We can't quite hit 60 without any hacks on, but as soon as I turn some hacks on, we can get a much smoother experience out of it. Now it's not going to run it at a constant 60, we're in the 40s right now, but it does feel a lot more playable than it does without the hacks. So 
So as you saw in this video, when it comes to ARM based single board computers, this thing is an absolute monster. But the RK3588 is still a bit young. We will get much better support down the road. Android right now is working really well. Hopefully we get an Android build with Google Play installed soon. But in the next video I do with this board, I'll be running Ubuntu, so if there's anything else you want to see running in Linux on this, let me know what it is in the comments below. There are a bunch of different manufacturers who've already announced single board computers with this same chip, and prices are going to range from the $99 price all the way up to around $200. I'm going to get my hands on a few more, but right now this is the most powerful ARM-based single board computer that I've ever tested. I personally can't wait to see what the community does with this little board. I'm really excited to see Box86 running on this with some more PC games. You know, we've got a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi 4, and they've already got some cool stuff running over there, so soon as they get their hands on this, we'll see some awesome real PC games running on the RK3588. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Firefly RK3588 SPC, I'll leave some links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.